once again, we have the privilege of having Sergeant Major Mark Bayless of the Valor Clinic Foundation. And I say it slow because I want you to donate to it. Today, we'll be talking about factors, risk factors for our vets concerning suicide. Sergeant Major, which group of vets are in the highest risk group right now? Uh, the the uh, data seems to suggest that it's the Vietnam vets. Uh, the four categories of suicides seem to happen from our relationship collapse, long-term physical health problems, addiction, and uh, long-term financial unemployment problems. And uh, you got to believe that those long-term physical health problems are a big contributing factor to those Vietnam vets and the, the older population of veterans that uh, seem to be hurting themselves the most. According to you, there are four different categories, mm -hmm. which you just went through. Uh, out of those categories, which are the more the most difficult to address, you would say? Uh, the, the hardest one to address is the cultural uh, conflict points for relationships for veterans. Uh, we've, if, we don't, if we don't learn to understand why our military behavior norms are what they were that kept us alive in combat and helped us do so well in war and in the service, uh, cause conflict and relationship problems on the outside. Uh, as a group, as a whole demographic, we have a trouble getting along with our kids, we have a trouble along getting along with our spouses, and argue with our coworkers quite a bit, much more than the civilian population. And uh, uh, largely, our culture is we make no mistakes, people die, and, and uh, we correct other people's mistakes, and civilians hate both of those. They're much more casual, hey, it's all good, and, right. and we're much more mission and task focused and get it right and do the best you can. And, and uh, when we start trying to push that on our civilian counterparts, whether they be in the family relationship or work relationships, uh, even social relationships like uh, organizations we get involved in outside of family and work, uh, it becomes it becomes a recurring theme. And uh, at some point it gets exhausting. And uh, vets have a tendency to then either isolate when it gets exhausting or put an end to the, the strain. And uh, when all four of those are happening at once, it gets it gets even more problematic, uh, uh, and it's important for you to mention those things are going on co-occurring with the emotional scars of war very often, which 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 complicates it. It aggravates our uh, our behavior norms to make them more intense and 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 much more confrontational when we bring the, our, those behaviors to civilians. And, and it's fatiguing. We, we lose sleep over nightmares. We have flashbacks. We have anxiety issues that go along with that, that, uh, that it can become a mess. And that last thing nobody can control is a surprise event. And if a surprise event hits and you have those other things going on, it's a, it's a really important time to be looking out for your battle buddies and, uh, and right. trying to shore people up and get support. So uh, it's, a, it's a complicated problem with a lot of parts. And, uh, and, I, and I hope that wasn't too much wordage. No, for, it, it, for, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not enough wordage because we yeah. have, as I've said before on the show, an average of 20 vets committing suicide mm -hmm. a day, which is totally unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, these are the people that have bled for us uh, overseas, have protected us in our way of living, uh, and now we have the duty to protect them and you're doing a great job in Valor. Uh, and, and just to say to say something about the Sergeant Major, he served as an Army Ranger. He served with the Special Forces. He was a Sergeant Major, which is top soldier. Um, he'd probably still be in the Army, but for the fact that he broke his back uh, while he was serving. So... He's a man that's now helping our vets uh, through the Valor program. And uh, you can look it up online, Google it, what have you. And uh, if you care, please contribute uh, because it's important. Uh, our vets were there for us and we should be there for them. So please tell us more about the program. Uh, we, we try to uh, address the relationship problems by helping the uh, vets understand where their behavior norms came from and how they impact 
with uh, with the civilian civilian world and the people they deal with out here. Uh, we try to get them up and uh, move in again for the long-term physical health problems by uh, teaching them to fly fish and taking them on archery hunts and, and having outdoor event days to do those things. Uh, we're, we're currently looking for opportunities to bring addiction uh, programs. But, uh, and we just partnered with uh, Warrior Workforce, which is a charity that uh, helps train uh, veterans digital communication skills and solar panel installation to help uh, deal with the long-term uh, financial and unemployment problems by uh, giving them the ability to get high paying jobs in the uh, digital communication industry, whether it be cell phones or, or downloads for TV or computers and things. And, uh, and we, uh, uh, we do a peer version of learning to manage the emotional scars of war so they can tone down the effects. And uh, we've noticed that when they tone down the effects, their relationships start to improve and their emotional scars start to wane. The, the effects of their emotional scars start to wane. The nightmares start to go down. The anxiety problems start to go down. The survivor's guilt starts to find a little more peace. They want to drink and party less. So it's like a collateral benefit toward the addiction piece. And uh, we're just breaking ground into the into the long term. Uh, we. Uh, uh, you mentioned in a previous uh, interview we did that we're getting Camp Trexler. A big part of what we're going to do at Camp Trexler is the job training piece. And uh, and uh, if, if uh, God won and Creek don't rise, we'll have a we'll have some addiction stuff there as well. And uh, we'll deal with the spectrum across the, the four where you can do upstream interventions. We don't want it to get to where the crawling crisis line, right? Right, right. If we know those are the vulnerabilities and we see... Uh, I'm making up an example, but since I'm here with you, uh, sure. Manny's having problems with his wife. You're single, so it's a good example to make, right? So people know it's no just problem. fabricated. Manny's yes. having problems with his wife. Hey, dude, come here so I can go ahead. If there's come a wife out there us. for me, please come and have problems. <laughs> but, but hey, hey, so I can go, man. Let's let's go talk about some stuff. Spend some time. We're we're uh, we're having a we're having a group with Rashad and and Pam, the now Air Force vet, and yada yada yada, and we're. We're coming together, talking about the stuff we uh, we're dealing with out here, and finding our our solutions. Why don't you come join us and and maybe maybe find some answers to tone down the conflict with your wife? And oh, by the way, those knees where you're limping from all that rucksack marching and and fighting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got some. Let's go fishing. Let's yeah. da, da 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 and get you up and moving and and uh, tone down some of the relationship problems so it doesn't get to the point where we have that big loss that becomes the final punch, right? Yeah. And. Uh, so I, I, I believe that the place we bring down the veteran suicide is knowing what the risk factors are and dealing with them sooner before they have to call a crisis line where they're standing on the bridge or, hey, I'm going right. to, if I don't get some help right now, I'm going to kill myself, get me in the hospital. Yeah. And uh, because that's the wrong time, that's a frantic, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a hard time to stop a train that's already going 100 miles an yeah. hour. And... Uh, one man's opinion. I seem to be a voice in the woods when I talk to others about that. Everybody thinks the right thing is the crisis line, and I think that's that's waited way too long. No, I I, I've, uh, I agree with you. I personally had calls from people that I served with that live in other parts of the country, and once in a blue they'll call me because they're in a bad way, and I have to talk them off the fence. And uh, depending on how bad they are, um, I'll either talk them to them nice or I'll talk to them like when I was back in the Marine Corps. There you go. Uh, you got to do what you got to do, which right? Which they understand. Yeah. You know, and it's like, no, you will, you know, do X, Y, and Z and uncork yourself, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but it's, it's real. It's real, and uh, you know I don't I don't take everybody's call, but when one of these folks call me, I do take their call, even if it's Good in the you. middle of the night, because I know why they're calling, because yeah. they're hurting, <laughs> and the hurt is real. Yeah. So uh, we're here for each other. That's people that didn't serve may not understand that, but. We understand that because we were there yeah. and we were trained, told, perhaps did things that uh, are not really natural. No. Uh, and um, 
you know, one thing is watching a movie. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't watch, I don't watch more movies. Exactly, anymore. exactly. So, uh, another thing is uh, being right there. Like I, I remember as a kid watching World War Two movies, yeah. and a mortar goes off, and it's like, boom, boom. And then <laughs> the first time I actually fired a mortar, it was like. Boom! Like what just happened? Yep. <laughs> and, and and the the base plate keeps going deeper and deeper, yep. and it's like this is nothing like in the movies. No. And then the other stuff that happens and clearly you, is not you, natural either. And you make a very important point because the people in lab coats, their ex perspectives to make decisions about how we handle the problems that veterans come home with are from the movies. Yeah, and they're not. There's there's not enough camouflage in the research and there are no lab coats in in the foxholes yeah. we have to figure out how to get the veterans insights into the the development of programs and that's one of the things we like about our program is we partnered with a i call her a genius hippie lady but uh but she was she's a she's a very bright woman that understand stood very well the behavior piece how trauma impacts behaviors and how behaviors affect relationships and uh, became a very important part of our program, but she didn't understand veterans at all. And uh, uh, there's a basis of the way you see uh, the world when the trauma shows up, uh, magnifies and intensifies as you go up the line from there. And she didn't understand the start point for how we think. And uh, when I started uh, going, when I started to understand what she was trying to teach me so that I could give her feedback, and I started telling her, oh, that's why the veterans get so obsessed with when there's a when there's sinks left when there's dishes left in the sink that didn't get washed or the kids don't put away the toys. We work to mission because you don't stop anything until you're mission ready, and you don't make mistakes because people die, and so they don't tolerate mistakes from other people. They get in their business all the time about it, and they get on the family all the time for leaving loose ends that they didn't follow through to the end, and. There's the conflict point because we completely think different than them. And uh, on her line of uh, progressions of behavior, interject trauma here with this behavior, that's what happens next sequence. They don't know our start point is the problem. There's right. nobody in the lab coats that get how we think. Right. And I, uh, there's, a, there's a doctor, I think his name is Johnson, if I remember right. Uh, don't hold me to that, who, who researched uh, brainwashing, right? And I think, I think he's in play. I think in basic training, uh, I think our base thoughts of the way the brain works changes and comes forward. And that's why we're such a high percentage of the suicides. We, we make up 7% of the population and depending on which study you read, anywhere from 16 to 25% of the suicides. What's different? Why do we have a 57% higher percent of our people commit suicides as civilians? Why is that? And I think it's I think it's they they're on the wrong psychological path. Yeah, we're we're better educated. We we overcome obstacles. We adapt to diversity and change better. Why the suicide difference? Why the homeless increase? What's going on? And I think I think they're not at the right start point in the psychological domino of events. And I think I think there's probably a brainwash piece and and. Uh, uh, lessons learned under under traumatic conditions are filed and stored and processed different than those taught cerebrally. And tell me somebody that wasn't scared in basic training. <laughs> and, and it's a real thing. Right. And, and it change, kind of changes the sequence, the way psychologists look at things. and uh, Or the way the brain reacts to storing and processing information. And I think we're just starting at the wrong place. I think everybody's still on Freud and coming up Freud. And we've changed it to... The Gomez or whatever the new one is, and uh, God help us that we we find people. Yeah, God help us if it's point. the Gomez one, because <laughs> Gomez is not old Jack Neptune about what the yeah. you know about but, uh, how to fix the problem. What's the, what's the version? But, what's the Marine version? And what's the difference? Yeah. What's the difference between the? Why are so many so fewer of them Air Force? Yeah. Why are even fewer of them Coast Guard? Why is it so much Marine Corps Army? Uh, Centric, yeah. The, uh, and uh, well, I have my own uh, opinion 
but uh, I'm not a professional, so I I'm think not, we need to force the professionals to find out with insights yeah. from people like you and me yeah. and Rashad over there. Right. I, I don't think they're they're. I don't think they're hearing. I don't think they're hearing right. And what's happened is, as a culture, we've turned and expected them to be us experts and turned and listened to them and believed them, and and it ain't working. And we're still hurting ourselves, and we haven't called them out on it. Right. And and at some point, the vets need to get together and say, "Hey, enough! You guys are blowing this. You need right. to start listening to us." And right. uh, they're not currently. And and uh, you know, I'll get off my rant. I'm not real happy with where we're going with the whole veteran suicide problem as a country it's 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 uh, he's nodding over there like i wish mark would shut up it's <laughs> no not at all it's, yeah. it's very interesting in that you know mm -hmm. we have veterans day mm -hmm. and i get text messages or people if they find out that uh, i serve oh thank you for your service and, and it's very nice mm -hmm. but you know what i gotta say you thank you for your service not only your service in uniform but as importantly, if not more importantly, the service that you're doing now for our veterans, because clearly uh, the, the veterans, uh, the VA is not doing the job, is not mm -hmm. getting the job done because this high rate of suicide is unacceptable. That's and true. we're talking about healthy young people that went to the military. So we're not talking about you know, drug addicts or this and that. And no, no, no. They they came in as as healthy young people, yeah. and they came out. And somewhere along the line, there was a something broke, mm -hmm. something broke, and <clears throat> that has to be addressed. And through the Ballard Foundation, which uh, you run, um, it's being addressed. So I thank you for that service as well. Congratulations on, on Camp Trexler. And um, folks, this is real. It's an epidemic. We're losing our vets. These are the people that fought for you, that were there for you, that let you live your lives while they were doing other things, whatever that thing was whether it was a clerk, a cook, or in the front lines. They served, they gave up their time, they gave up their part of their lives, and they need our help. So look up the Valor Foundation and donate as much as you can. I thank you for your time. We appreciate your feedback. Let us know what you think. Let us know whatever uh, you want to hear about or hear from, we want to be your alternative to the other networks, which just give you their opinion and feed you their opinion. We're just giving you facts and letting you be objective and letting you figure things out on your own. I'm Manny Gomez, and I thank you for joining us.